Velkommen til Films TV. På det seneste har vi talt meget om de prominente tv-serier, som selskabet HBO har produceret. I vores sidste udsendelse talte vi med danske Alan Hyde, som medvirker i HBO's vampyrserie True Blood, og for nylig var vi med til lanceringen af HBO Nordic i Sverige, hvor vi fik en lille smagsprøve på alle de godter, som HBO fans snart får adgang til i hele Norden. En af selskabets lidt mindre kendte serier, i hvert fald herhjemme, hedder Treme. Men ligesom de fleste HBO-serier, så har Treme fået hammerne gode anmeldelser og er skillige priser. Serien, som herhjemme kan ses på Seymour Series, er skabt af David Simon, geniet bag den epokegørende politiserie The Wire, og hans seneste serie foregår i nutidens New Orleans, hvor vi følger en række personer, der forsøger at komme til hægterne igen oven på orkanen Katrina, som terroriserede byen tilbage i 2005. Det er endnu en yderst velproduceret HBO-serie, gennemsyret af godt skuespil, glimrende dialoger og spændende karakterer. Og eftersom serien finder sted i New Orleans, kommer det naturligvis heller ikke som nogen overraskelse, at filmen er fyldt til randen med herlig musik, ikke mindst blues og jazz. En af folkene bag serien er musikeren Davis Rogan, som er født og opvokset i New Orleans, og som ikke blot har været med til at skrive både sange og manuskripter til serien, men som også har fungeret som konsulent til David Simon og klaverlæger for skuespillerne. Og så er en af seriens hovedpersoner, der også hedder Davis, til med baseret på Rogan. Den 45-årige musiker slog for nylig et smut forbi København for at spille nogle koncerter, så Films TV troppede op for at tale med Davis om New Orleans, Treme og ikke mindst musikken. Den gemytelige herre lagde endda ud med at spille et lille og temmelig våde nummer for os, som lynhurtigt fremhævede hans drilske humor. Uh, hi, my name is David Strogan. I'm a piano player from New Orleans, Louisiana. You're visiting uh, Copenhagen. And I'd like to do a song about the changing socioeconomic and racial makeup of my neighborhood, Treme. It's a song called Strippers. And I'd also like to remind everybody that it is in fact illegal to perform fellatio in the state of Louisiana. And if you do, You become a registered sex offender and you have to send out cards to everybody in the neighborhood. So this might explain the joke as it comes along. Here it goes. DJ Davis is mansion in the ghetto. In the hood, that's okay. DJ Davis is mansion in the ghetto. In the heart of downtown Treme. So two things that drive me nuts, y'all. I got thick sucking strippers and they're moving in my neighborhood. I got thick sucking strippers and they're moving in my neighborhood. We well, call it gentrification. You call it gentrification. You call it gentrification for me. I'm gonna call it good. In the summer of 2005, I recorded the record The Once and Future DJ, which had the song Strippers and had the song Hurricane. And uh, I had you know, written it, recorded it, and I had the master disc. And I put the master disc in the post office the day before the storm hit. So the master disc was lost in eight feet of flood water. But the guy who had uh, recorded the record had it on his hard drive. He fled town with his hard drive, and he was able to make another copy and send it to the pressing plant. And so I was able to make a thousand copies of the CD. And there was a music magazine, Offbeat, that was uh, out of print, didn't print an issue for September, October, and November. And so December, they had their like, we're back, we're gonna try and get this together issue with a review of the record. So David Simon came to town, read the review, bought the record, and I got the gig. Which is, this is called merit. It never happens in the entertainment industry. You know, I mean, there's no connections, no management, no nothing, just I made a good record, he read the review, bought the record, and I got the job. It's not, it's, it's luck, like I've been, I was like, oh, you were lucky. I'm like, yeah, man, 15 years on the corner making scraps, you call that luck, okay. Or, or, or having to like yell at kids for, you know, to keep my lights on while I'm writing songs at night, you know. Luck my ass, it was, it was, it was you know, let's go with fate. I had no idea who David Simon was. Now, the, um, the Minister of Culture for France had given all the artist residencies to New Orleans artists. You figure, you know, get them out of New Orleans, get your mind right there. So I'm in an abbey in the Loire Valley, like where I discovered that loneliness and boredom don't lead to be creativity. But, you know, I, I, I drank a lot of really nice wine and the cheese was, so, but I'm in, a, I'm in an abbey in the Loire Valley and I get an email 
this guy, David Simon, this producer, wants to get in touch with him. I'm like, who the hell is this? So we have an interview. He tells me, you know, there's a show called The Wire. There's a character named McNulty. I envision the Davis character as the McNulty of the, of the show. I have no idea what this means. He says, he says, look, let me just send you some discs. And here I was, and, and in the Loire Valley, the only people who speak English learned how to speak English from, from Brits. You know, so I was really dying for some American urban English. And so he said, so imagine, I've never, imagine someone says they want to collaborate with you. You've never heard of them. They say they'll send you something. So this was, I'd never heard of David Simon. He said he wanted to collaborate and he mails me seasons one through three of The Wire. And I'm like, holy shit. Okay, I, this guy, I respect this guy. I'm happy to work with this. So I, I, and I had a world of respect for him and also his desire to get it right. I mean, when I say, do I worry about an outsider coming in? You know, the fact is, is that, we spent hours and hours and hours and hours just talking about things and, and the way New Orleans worked. And, and I mean, they take nine out of my 10 suggestions, so it's 90% accurate. It's absolutely authentic, it's, it's absolutely raw, and uh, uh, you know, it's sort of, I mean, I would do an advert for HBO unless we don't get a fourth season, in which case I'm gonna, no. They, they were able, I mean, you know, there was a TV show called, what was it called, Kville, and it was on the Fox network. And, it didn't pull the eight million people they wanted to do, so they pulled it after the first season, you know? And Treme, Treme has been, they have, they have taken David, David Simon has said, no, this is what I want to do, and they've had belief in his vision, and they've been able to let him carry the, uh, carry the show from season one into season two. Um, um, I was, you know, Okay, well, I was talking with someone the other day, you know, when, when te season two and I said, well, how do you feel, David, about the, about the fact that it dropped from a million viewers on the first Sunday night to only, only you know, 700,000 viewers on the first Sunday night? And David Simon was like, man, audiences are for pussies. He also said I wouldn't wipe my, if you gave me an Emmy, I wouldn't use it to wipe my ass. So <laughs> he must have pissed off those Emmy people somehow, somewhere, because yeah. they, I don't know, how come The Wire never won an Emmy? <laughs> The thing is, is that in, in New York, there are some people who can make a living playing music and they're at this top, 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 top echelon. And in LA, it's the same thing. Whereas in, in, in New Orleans, there's enough of a community supporting the music that there, that there are just lots of people who, you know, you can, you can make a living wage, not that great of a living wage, but you can make a living wage as a, as a performing musician. And uh, especially before the storm and now after all of that stuff, it's it's coming back, but what all integrates and integrates in the in the Treme show is is there the, the the music makers, the music makers, and uh, the people who work in the restaurant scene and the culture bearers like the Mardi Gras Indians and the people in the social aid and pleasure club. And we all, you know, when I got a big check from HBO, I did not go to Walmart to buy my bicycle. I went to a place called Bicycle Michaels across the street from a club I play at all the time. It's across the street from the Spotted Cat. I went to Bicycle Michaels because it cost a bit more, but the guys at Bicycle Michaels make a wage off of my bicycle, and then they go across the street and buy beer at the club and put money in my tip hat. And it's a, it's a system we have. It's, a, it's, it, it, not unlike Copenhagen, I've heard, it's a great, big, very small town. Right now, we just actually survived Hurricane Isaac, and Hurricane Isaac was a big, slow-moving storm that knocked over a bunch of power lines, and the company, which is not government-owned, but the company that owned all the power, I just escaped from New Orleans where 80% of the people had no electricity in their homes. And when it's 90 degrees and 100% and humidity, it's no fun to not have electricity. So uh, there was the Hurricane Katrina, or what we like to say actually is the Federal Flood, because the Federal Flood, it wasn't so much the hurricane, but the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers had failed to create an adequate levee system. Now, you know, it doesn't flood in Denmark. It doesn't flood in Holland. It doesn't flood in Italy. If we, if we, if we the United States, think we're such a great world power, then how come they can't keep the water out of New Orleans? And so, the, but that was, you know, that was the, the main thesis. So we don't say Hurricane Katrina, we say the Federal Flood. And U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, get your act together. Uh, it's, you know, after the Federal Flood, it, it's been a bit of a, rec of a recovery and changing period, but um, I'd like to say the restaurant scene is back better than ever. The, the music scene is back, and, and, and having people come and visit and appreciate what we do is how we make our living. So I'd like to encourage everyone to do that.
I'm the, I was the piano coach for uh, Curious Case of Benjamin Button. It was, uh, this was a case of we had just come back to New Orleans and, I, and I, all the credit in the world to David Fincher and his team for basing the show in New Orleans because that was really a period of time when New Orleans was still down on its ass. And so for a major production to come into town and infuse the town with that kind of money, and there was some second or third AD who was friends with a, a musician friend of mine, and uh, I suddenly got the job as the piano teacher. So there were uh, there was a uh, there was one midget guy who was the very 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 young or old Benjamin Button who I didn't work with, but then there was another guy uh, whose name is Robert Towers who actually made a career out of playing the Hamburglar on McDonald's commercials, and is also featured in the Sarah Silverman video. But anyway, that's either. This guy, Robert Towers, had to play a bit of piano, so I coached him. Brad Pitt, in the middle years, had to play some piano, so I coached him. And then there's a 14-year-old kid whose name I'm spacing on, who was the, who was the last incarnation of, of uh, Benjamin Button, and I got to teach him, too. So Benjamin Button, there were three people. Um, Brad, you know, bless his heart, very nice guy. Maybe, maybe aggressively nice guy, but he's a, very, he's a very nice guy. Aggressively regular guy. But no, I mean... Who, who, I can't even imagine what it's like being him. But, you know, Brad didn't get around to learning his little part. So in the end, they took my hands and shaved them. And I, my hands spent two hours in makeup being, you know, stippled and, and meant to look like an old, old man. And then that was me playing uh, that little bit of the Bethina Waltz. And uh, I, so I have two seconds of screen time and a screen credit. And it was, David Fincher is, is awesome and his, his whole team was great too, so... Real honor and privilege to work with them. Husk at du kan finde alle vores tidligere films TV udsendelser på films under films TV fanebladet og også på videovideo.dk i iTunes og via vores gratis video video app.